So our first exercise to get warmed up is going to be called return of the sock. This is to get our shoulders warm, get us bending down into the position that we might need to use for shot put. In the area in front of me, this can be on your lawn or in your throwing space, I've scattered out a number of socks. In a specific time limit, I'll let you choose. I'm going to use 30 seconds. I'm going to see if I can retrieve all of the socks back to the starting point. There's one rule. I must go out the back and around the side when bringing the socks back in and coming back at the area. This is how it's going to look. Five seconds left for me. Can I make it? Okay, now I want you to count up how many socks you've got. If you've managed to collect them all, that's fantastic. What I want you to do now is I want you to do it again and see if you can beat your score. If that's too easy for you, when you've returned all the socks back, can you pair them up? Have a go, record how many socks you've got, tally it down, and then we'll see if we can improve our score. Okay, now that we've recovered from our warm up, we're gonna look at the shot put technique. First of all, in shot put, we throw behind the line on a rounded area. I'm using a towel, you can use a long football sock, a piece of string, anything that you can make to put your foot behind. It's important in shot put that we don't tread over the line. This would be called a foul. Thinking back to the warm up, we had to go out the back of the area and collect our socks. Why do you think this was? Because in shot put, we enter through the back. Now, first and foremost, I'm gonna stand side on. I'm throwing towards my house. My left foot is pointing towards the camera. My right foot is pointing towards the back. I'm gonna put my hand into my neck and my elbow is pointing up. Next, I'm gonna put the weight over my back leg. My chin must be in line with my knee and my toe. Next, I'm not looking for us to throw it. I want us to push, but we are focusing on transferring the weight from our back leg to our front leg. Okay? Watch that again. So chin, knee, toe, elbow up, and we're pushing. We're not throwing, okay, we're pushing. Notice something else about my feet. My feet, I'm on the balls of my toes. So my chin is in line with my knee and my toe. However, I'm on the balls of my toes and I'm pushing through. Have a couple of goes at this and make sure you get the technique right. My elbow, on the balls of our toes, transferring the weight from our back leg to our front leg. Have a go. We've now looked at the key teaching points and we're gonna move on to the angle of release of the shot put. I'm gonna enter my grid through the back. We're not forgetting the key teaching points now. Ball in at the neck, dirty fingertips, clean palm, elbow up, chin, knee, toe, weight over the back leg, and as I twist now, I want to use my hips to transfer my momentum through. And I'm going to release the ball. Now when I release, I'm not looking to release out straight. I'm not looking to loop. I'm looking to push through. Okay? So my non-holding arm twist and we push through. Have a go at that. We've now looked at the key teaching points of our standing shot put throw, and we've looked at the best point of trajectory of where to release the shot put. We're now gonna move on to our 
to our throat. Now then, one thing that we have to keep in mind is that we enter through the back of the chocolate area. So I'm walking in through the back of the chocolate area. Keep this in mind because it's important that we don't forget that we walk over, otherwise this would be known as a foul and our throw would be discounted. Now, when we throw, I'm gonna throw down my garden, okay? Wherever you are now, you judge how far you can throw. But it's important that if you can't throw that far, we, rem we focus on the key teaching points of the shot put throw. It's important that we look at where the shot put lands because now I want us to record our distance so that we can compare ourselves to maybe some Olympic records, see how close we are, see how far we are. Okay, so I'm gonna get ready now. I'm gonna throw my shot put. I'm gonna use a marker as a sock that I had in my starter activity. You might wanna get a twig, anything that can be used to mark the spot where it lands. So, I'm getting ready. Elbow up, clean palm, dirty fingertips, into my neck, chin, knee, toe, weight over my back leg, transferring it to the, the front as I throw. Stood side on, and my hips are gonna transfer my weight through. Okay, so I've recorded now. Where that hit the ground, I'm gonna use my sock now to go and mark it. Okay, I'm gonna come back and get my tape measure. Now, no one's throwing now, so I can come out the back and go around the front. I've got my tape measure. I'm gonna measure from where I threw it from. You might need to ask your dad for a tape measure or whoever's looking after you. Okay, so that's where my shot, shot put landed. So I'm gonna measure it to there. And we're on two meters. I'm now coming back around into the back of the grid. I'm going to have another go. Now I want you to try and beat your previous score. I do have a stretch and challenge task for you. Here are the resource cards. It's on a glide and rotational shot put throw. If you feel confident enough, have a go. Okay, here are some plenary questions now. What point of trajectory is the best point to release the shot put? Why is that important? What might happen if I release the shot put down towards the ground or too high? What three body parts is it important that I keep in line? How might the use of my hips allow me to throw further? And if you can answer me that question, tell me why that is important.